dear students today's topic is principles of genetics the main objectives of this module are to know about the basics of genetics to know about the mendel's work to know about the law of dominance to know about the law of segregation and to finally know about the law of independent assortment dear students let's first start with the introduction since the beginning of human history people have wondered how traits are inherited from one generation to the next although children often look more like one parent than the other most offspring seem to be a blend of the characteristics of both parents centuries of breeding of domestic animals and plants had shown that useful traits speed in horses strength in oxen however there was no scientific way to predict the outcome of a cross between two particular parents it wasn't until 1865 that an austrian monk named gregor john mendel found that individual traits are determined by discrete factors later known as genes which are inherited from the parents to the offspring his rigorous approach transformed agricultural breeding from an art to a science however mendel's work was not appreciated immediately that's why the science of genetics really began with the rediscovery of mendel's work at the turn of the 20th century by teschermark hugo davries and karl korens and the next 40 years or so saw the elucidation of the principles of inheritance and genetic mapping microbial genetics emerged in the mid 1940s and the role of dna as the genetic material was firmly established during this period great advances were made in understanding the mechanisms of gene transfer between bacteria and broad knowledge base was established from which later developments would emerge the discovery of the structure of dna by james watson and francis crick in 1953 provided the stimulus for the development of genetics at the molecular level and the next few years saw a period of intense activity and excitement as the main features of the gene and its expression were determined this work culminated with the establishment of the complete genetic code in 1966 the stage was now set for the appearance of the new genetics from 1865 to now the history of genetics development is the development of human knowledge and understanding of genes in other words genetics is a science of the structure function and movement of genes before going into the exact definition of gene one can begin by understanding that a gene is a piece of dna which has a function such as determining human eye color hair color skin color or that of a disease dear friends let's now discuss what is genetics the tendency of offspring to inherit parental characteristics is termed as heredity and the study of science of heredity and the reasons governing the variation between the parents and their offspring is called as genetics the transmission of biological information from parents to offsprings that encode physiological features has been recognized since early recorded history as long as 4000 years ago farmers in various parts of the world employed strategies of selective breeding of crops and animals in order to enhance desirable traits such as crop resistance to an adverse climate genetic principles are the rules of standards governing the biological phenomena of heredity the transmission of characteristics from parents to the offspring where information encoded biochemically using dna in units 
called genes. Dear students, let us now discuss the Mendelian concept of heredity. Our modern understanding of how traits may be inherited through generations comes from the principles proposed by Mendel in 1865. However, Mendel did not discover these foundational principles of inheritance by studying human beings but rather by studying Pisum sativum that is the pea plant or the common pea plant. Indeed, after eight years of tedious experiments with these plants and by his own admission some courage to persist with them, Mendel proposed three foundational principles of inheritance. The laws of inheritance were derived by Gregor Mendel by conducting hybridization experiments in garden peas. Between 1856 and 1863, he cultivated and tested some 29,000 pea plants. From these experiments, he deduced two generalizations, which later became known as Mendel's laws of heredity or Mendelian inheritance. He described these laws in a two-part paper, Experiments on Plant Hybridization, that he read to the Natural History Society of Bruno on February 8 and March 8, 1865 and which was published in 1866. Mendel's findings allowed other scientists to predict the expression of traits on the basis of mathematical probabilities. A large contribution to Mendel's success can be traced to his decision to start his crosses only with plants he demonstrated were true breeding. He also measured only absolute that is binary characteristics such as color, shape and position of the offsprings rather than quantitative characteristics. He expressed his results numerically and subjected them to statistical analysis. His method of data analysis and his large sample size gave credibility to his data. He also had the foresight to follow several successive generations that is F2 generation, F3 generation of his pea plants and record their variations. Finally, he performed test crosses that is back crossing descendants of the initial hybridization to the initial true breeding lines to reveal the presence and proportion of recessive characteristics. Without his careful attention to procedure and detailed Mendel's work could not have had the impact it made on the world of genetics. Mendel's laws discovered that by crossing white flower with a purple flower plants, the result was not a hybrid of springs rather than being a mix of the two, the offspring was purple flowered. He then conceived the idea of heredity units which he called factors. One which is a recessive characteristics and the other dominant one. Mendel said that factors later called genes normally occur in peers in ordinary body cells yet segregate during formation of sex cells. Each member of the peer becomes part of the separate sex cells. The dominant gene such as the purple flower in Mendel's plants will hide the recessive gene the white flower. So purple is dominant trait while as the white is recessive trait. After Mendel self-fertilized the F1 generation and obtained the 3 is to 1 ratio, he correctly theorized that genes can be paired in three different ways for each trait that is capital AA dominant one, small AA recessive one and the capital A small A that is also showing the dominant trait. Mendel stated that each individual has two factors for each trait, one from each parent. The two factors may or may not contain the same information. If the two factors are identical, the individual is called homozygous for the trait. If the two factors have different information, the individual is called heterozygous. The alternate forms of a factor are called the alleles. 
the genotype of an individual is made up of many alleles it possesses. An individual's physical appearance or phenotype is determined by its alleles as well as by the surrounding environment. Individual possesses two alleles for each trait. One allele is given by the female parent and the other allele is given by the male parent. They are passed on when an individual matures and produces gametes, that is the egg and sperm cells. When gametes form, the paired alleles separate randomly so that each gamete receives a copy of one of the two alleles, the dominant or recessive. The presence of an allele doesn't promise that the trait will be expressed in the individual that it possesses. In heterozygous individuals, the only allele that is expressed is the dominant one. Dear students, let's now discuss the different types of traits one by one. First, the dominant traits. Before Mendel's experiments, most people believed that traits in offspring resulted from a blending of the traits of each parent. However, when Mendel cross-pollinated one variety of pure bread plants with another, these crosses would yield offspring that looked like either one of the plants, not a blend of the two. For example, when Mendel cross fertilized plants with wrinkled seeds to those with smooth seeds, he did not get progeny that is offsprings with semi-wrinkled seeds. Instead, the progeny from this cross had only smooth seeds. In general, if the progeny of crosses between purebred plants looked like only one of the parents with regard to a specific trait, Mendel called the expressed parental trait the dominant trait. From this simple observation, Mendel proposed his first principle, the principle of uniformity. This principle states that all progeny of a cross like this where the parents differ by only one trait will appear identical. Exceptions to the principle of uniformity include the phenomena of penetrance, expressivity and sex linkage which were discovered after Mendel's time. Now dear students, let's now discuss the recessive traits. When conducting his experiments, Mendel designated the two pure parental breeding generations involved in a particular cross as P1 and P2 and then denoted the progeny resulting from the cross as filial or F1 generation. Although the plants of F1 generation looked like one parent of the P generation, they were actually hybrids of two different plant parents. Upon observing the uniformity of the F1 generation, Mendel wondered whether the F1 generation could still possess the non-dominant trait or recessive of the other parent in some hidden way. To understand whether traits were hidden in the F1 generation, Mendel returned to the method of self-fertilization. Here he created an F2 generation by letting an F1P plant self-fertilize, that is F1 versus F1. This way, he knew he was crossing two plants of the exact same genotype. This technique, which involves looking at a single trait, is today called a monohybrid cross. The resulting F2 generation had seeds that were either round or wrinkled. When looking at the figure, notes that for each F1 plant, the self-fertilization resulted in more round than wrinkled seeds among the F2 progeny. These results illustrate several important aspects of scientific data. Multiple trials are necessary to see patterns in experimental data. There is a lot of variation in the measurements of one experiment. A large sample size or n is required to make any quantitative comparisons or conclusions. In the figure, the result of experiment 1 shows that the single characteristics of seed shape was expressed in two different forms in the F2 generation. 
either round or wrinkled. Also, when Mendel averaged the relative proportion of round and wrinkled seeds across all F2 progeny sets, he found that round was constantly three times more frequent than wrinkled. This three is to one proportion resulting from F1 to F1 crosses suggested there was a hidden recessive form of the trait. So Mendel recognized that this recessive trait was carried down to the F2 generation from the earlier parental generation. Dear friends, let's now discuss Mendel and alleles. As mentioned, Mendel's data did not support the idea about traits blending that were popular among the biologists of his time, as there were never any semi-wrinkled seeds or greenish-yellow seeds. For example, in the F2 generation, Mendel concluded that blending should not be the expected outcome of parental trait combinations. So Mendel instead hypothesized that each parent contributes some particulate matter to the offspring. He called this heritable substance elementin. Remember, in 1865, Mendel did not know about DNA or genes. Indeed, for each of the traits he examined, Mendel focused on how the elementin that determined that trait was distributed among the progeny. We now know that a single gene controls seed form, while another controls color and so on, and that elementin is actually the assembly of physical genes located on chromosomes. Multiple forms of those genes known as alleles represent the different traits. For example, one allele results in round seeds and another allele specifies wrinkler seeds. One of the most impressive things about Mendel's thinking lies in the notation that he used to represent his data. Mendel's notation of a capital and a lowercase letter that is A, capital small A, for the hybrid genotype actually represented what we now know as the two alleles of a one gene, A, capital and small A. Moreover, as previously mentioned, in all cases, Mendel saw approximately a 3 is to 1 ratio of one phenotype to another. When one parent carried all the dominant traits, that is capital AA, the F1 hybrids were indistinguishable from that parent. However, even though these F1 plants had the same phenotype as the dominant P1 parents, they possessed a hybrid genotype that is capital A, small a, that carried the potential to look like the recessive P1 parent that is small a, small a, the recessive trait. After observing this potential to express a trait without showing the phenotype, Mendel put forth his second principle of inheritance, the principle of segregation. According to this principle, the particles or alleles as we now know them that determine traits are separated into gametes during the meiosis. And meiosis produces equal number of egg or sperm cells that contain each allele. Dear friends, let's now discuss the dihybrid crosses. Mendel had thus determined what happens when two plants that are hybrid for one trait are crossed with each other. But he also wanted to determine what happens when the two plants that are each hybrid for two traits are crossed. Mendel therefore decided to examine the inheritance of two characteristics at once. Based on the concept of segregation, he predicted that traits must sort into gametes separately. By extrapolating from his earlier data, Mendel also predicted that the inheritance of one characteristic did not affect the inheritance of a different characteristic. Mendel tested this idea of trait independence with more complex crosses. First, he generated plants that were purebred for two characteristics, such as seed color, yellow and green, and seed shape, round and wrinkled. These plants 
would serve as the P1 generation for the experiment. So in this case, Mendel crossed plants with wrinkled and yellow seeds with plants with round and green seeds. For his earlier monohybrid crosses, Mendel knew which traits were dominant round and yellow. So in the F1 generation, he expected all round yellow seeds from crossing these purebred varieties and that is exactly what he observed. Mendel knew that each of the F1 progeny were dihybrids. In other words, they contained both alleles for each characteristic. He then crossed individual F1 plants with one another. This is called a dihybrid cross. Mendel's results from this cross were as follows. 315 plants with round yellow seeds, 108 plants with round green seeds, 101 plants with wrinkled yellow seeds and 32 plants with wrinkled green seeds. Thus the various phenotypes he observed were present in a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 typical ratio. The proportion of each trait was still approximately 3 is to 1 for both seed shape and seed color. In other words, the resulting seed shape and seed color looked as if they had come from two parallel monohybrid crosses even though two characteristics were involved in one cross. These traits behaved as though they had segregated independently. From these data, Mendel developed the third principle of inheritance, the principle of independent assortment. According to this principle, Alleles at one locus segregate into gametes independently of alleles at the other loci or position. Such gametes are formed in equal frequencies. Dear students, let's now discuss the Mendel's laws or Mendel's principles. The Mendel's four postulates and laws of inheritance are the first principle of peered factors, second principle of dominance, third the law of segregation or law of purity of gametes which is actually the Mendel's first law of inheritance and fourth law of independent assortment or Mendel's second law of inheritance. However, Mendel summarized his findings in two laws, the law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Dear students, let's now discuss these postulates and principles of inheritance one by one. Postulate one, principles of peered factors. A character is represented in an organism that is deployed by at least two factors. The two factors lie on the two homologous chromosomes at the same locus or position. They may represent the same homologous that is capital T capital T in case of pure tall pea plants or alternate expression that is heterozygous for example capital T small t in case of hybrid tall pea plants of the same character. Factors representing the alternate or same forms of a character are called as alleles or allelomorphs. Dear students, let's now discuss second postulate or principle of dominance. So principle of dominance suggests that when two homozygous individuals with one or more sets of contrasting characters are crossed, the characters which appear in the hybrid of F1 generation are always the dominant characters and those do not appear in F1 offsprings are always the recessive or hidden characters. Dear students, let's now discuss the law of segregation or the first law of Mendel's inheritance. The law of segregation states that when any individual produces gametes, the copies of a gene separate so that each gamete receives only one copy. A gamete will receive one allele or the other. The direct proof of this was later found when the process of meiosis came to be known. In meiosis, the 
paternal and maternal chromosomes get separated and the allele with the characters are segregated into two different gametes. Dear students, let's now discuss the law of independent assortment or the second law of Mendel's inheritance. The law of independent assortment also known as inheritance law states that alleles of different genes assort independently of one another during gamete formation. While Mendel's experiments with mixing one trait always resulted in a 3 is to 1 ratio between dominant and recessive phenotypes, his experiments with mixing two traits that is dihybrid cross showed 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratios. But the 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 typical ratio shows that each of the two genes are independently inherited with a 3 is to 1 ratio. Mendel concluded that different traits are inherited independently of each other so that there is no relation for example between a cat's color and tail length. This is actually only true for genes that are not linked to each other. Independent assortment occurs during meiosis 1 in eukaryotic organisms specifically at metaphase 1 of meiosis to produce a gamete with a mixture of the organism's maternal and paternal chromosomes. Along with chromosomal crossover, this process aids in increasing genetic diversity by producing novel genetic combinations. In independent assortment, the chromosomes that end up in a newly formed gamete are randomly sorted from all possible combinations of maternal and paternal chromosomes because gametes end up with a random mix instead of a predefined set from either parent. Gametes are therefore considered assorted independently. As such, the gamete can end up with any combination of paternal or maternal chromosome. Any of the possible combinations of gametes formed from maternal and paternal chromosomes will occur with equal frequency. The gametes will normally end up with 23 chromosomes, but the origin of any particular one will be randomly selected from the paternal or maternal chromosomes. This contributes to the genetic variability of progeny. Dear students, let's now discuss the rediscovery of Mendel's work. Mendel's conclusions were largely ignored. Although they were not completely unknown to biologists of the time, they were not seen as generally applicable even by Mendel himself who thought they only applied to certain categories of species or traits. A major block to understanding their significance was the importance attached by 19th century biologists to the apparent blending of inherited traits in the overall appearance of the progeny now known to be due to multi-gene interactions in contrast to the organ-specific binary characters studied by Mendel. In 1900, however, his work was rediscovered by three European scientists, Hugo Davries, Karl Korens and Erich von Teschermark. Regardless, the rediscovery made Mendelism an important but controversial theory. Its most vigorous promoter in Europe was William Battison, who coined the term genetics, gene and allele to describe many of its tenets. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding principles of genetics. Hope you have understood it well. See you next time with a new topic. Till then, take care and goodbye.